<laughs> All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Pastor Jim, what have you been smoking over there? Actually, no of the three stooges were injured during the making of this inspirational moment. You know, you, you could go into a foreign country and never speak the language, but you just show that clip. Everybody knows who the three stooges are. Just a per quick personal note. My mother was a student, uh, school nurse. Back when I was in elementary school, and I got to spend some, a lot of time with Larry Fine, Larry, Moe, and Curly, uh, the last few years of his life. And, uh, you know, those, those, those contract actors didn't uh, actually, most of them died, didn't even have enough to live on. Because, <laughs> and uh, what a precious man. I wish I'd known all that I know today and share with him. He was a Jewish man as well as the other Howard brothers, but... Uh, what a great memory that is. We're going to talk today, how that makes sense, is we're going to talk today about the slap heard round the world. Okay? The slap heard round the world. Uh, the year was 325 A.D. And one of the five most famous emperors of Rome, we've got his picture up there, uh, Constantine the Great. Now, if you remember the movie Gladiator, uh, you remember Commodus sitting there bemoaning his fate, twirling his gladius. Well, this, that statue right there was the inspiration for that moment in the movie. Just a little movie tidbit. But during uh, Constantine's early years, he had made Christianity the religion of the empire. But it had a lot of problems. And there was about 300 or so, 350 bishops throughout the Roman Empire. And none of them could agree on everything. So... He called for uh, in the Council of Nicaea in 325. He wanted to sort of codify uh, the faith as well as uh, would be discussed at this, the doctrine of the Trinity and some of the major doctrines of the church. And so that was held. And there was a man from Egypt, a very powerful, persuasive man named Arius. And Arius sincerely believed that Jesus was not equal to God. He was the son of God, but he was not co-equal to God. Because Arius believed that Jesus needed to be a relative God, a compassionate God, a, a God that we could identify with, a God that was more human than God. Boy, doesn't this seem a lot like some of the theology that's crept into the church today? And uh, they were debating this heavily at the Council of Nicaea, and there was an old elder man from Asia Minor, one of the churches there, that had listened to this long enough. And he got up and began to make the case that Jesus was God. It was, let us make man in our own image and likeness. He was there in the beginning. He was equal to God. He was part of God. And uh, during this, he, he got so incensed and riled up that he slapped Arius right in front of Constantine. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the penalty for that was, the minimum was imprisonment, but most likely death, because you are not allowed to do that in the presence of Constantine. Now, Constantine, he was, he was wise by this moment. He wasn't fully a Christian yet. That would come about 20 years later when he would get baptized. But he said, you know what? I want to hold off on this. I appreciate the old man's boldness, but I, you guys decide on his fate after the council. And so they threw this old elder into prison. They shackled him and chained him and, uh, and then began to continue the debate. But the, the moment of that boldness by this old elder stayed in their minds. During that night, uh, Constantine had a vision from the Lord, just like Pontius Pilate's wife did. Hey, do not harm this righteous man. Constantine would have these visions all throughout his life and be part of his very uh, spiritual transformation. At the same time, in that jail, just like it was with Paul and Silas, in that night, he had a visitor, an angelic visitor, and the chains and shackles were broken off this elder. And when they walked in on him the next day, they found that he had been completely free. The, the, the gates weren't open, but he was set free. Fast forward a few days and the council was so moved and, uh, it, that, they, that they, voted to, uh, they voted with this elder 
and we get now what historically we call the Nicene Creed. And let me just read you uh, just a few lines of that because it's very powerful. And uh, it says here that we believe in God the Father, the Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, of Him that all things that are seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, the one being with the Father. Thank God for this elder. In fact, we've got a picture of this elder. Now, I can guarantee you that this elder probably would not approve of this photo because he never wore a cap like that, and that's a religious sort of thing that man does to this. Now, offhand, without any of the pastoral staff or anyone here in the first service, do you know who this elder is? Anybody? All right, so we'll fast forward it again. Now put the common version that we make this elder out to be. That's right. This was St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, probably the most generous man of the third century. A generous man that was known in his own, uh, took his own personal inheritance and bought the dowry of many young women who poverty and famine and plague had befallen his area and his city in Asia Minor. He had paid for their dowries that kept them out of slavery. And, of course, the, 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 the tradition of gift-giving and generosity goes on and echoes throughout history. But it was the slap. It was the slap that preserved the gospel. It was the slap that preserved heresy from entering into the church. It's the slap. All of God's plan, see, he had a plan that he was going to give us the Holy Scripture for us to be a guidepost. It was for St. Nicholas here that kept that before us. And so in this great Christmas season in which we've commercialized this figure, but I want to honor him in a holy way today by the same generosity, boldness, and zeal that he gave his life toward. I want us to give that today in our offering, in our giving. Amen. Can you be there with me today? Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an inspirational man, a true man of history, not just a figment of cartoon books and, and uh, caricatures and, and, and Christmas cards. Father, we can take the same faith that he had. And, uh, Lord, we, we might need to be not only both generous, but we need, maybe need to stand in this generation for truth and righteousness and stand against heresy. Father, we thank you for all those that you have so graciously given, Lord, like the same inheritance that you gave Nicholas. That, Father, we're just aching to, to use it for your benefit and for your glory. And in this spirit and time of generosity, we thank you for inspiring us today. In Jesus' mighty name. We hope you enjoyed that video. We're always posting new content, so go ahead and click the subscribe button now to subscribe to Every Nation City Church channel. God bless you.